We have such an exciting guest speaker tonight. So Sally is a diamond. Um, she has such a cool story and I'm excited to hear a lot of it because I haven't heard the whole thing. I just know um, like her and her husband are in ministry. She joined for the products, but quickly like got them paid for them. I love that because I relate so much to that. Um, that was kind of similar to what to my journey as far as like getting into the business. Um, she went diamond in five years. She's a mom of two kiddos. Um, we are both in Jessica Heffley's leading ladies um, thing, and which has been so, so cool. Um, but she just, she's just an incredible person, loves the Lord. Um, and I just know you're going to be so very encouraged and inspired by her story today. Um, I'm just excited to hear for you all to hear from her. So Sally, hey, take it away. Hey. Yes, Joanna has seen... Um me at my craziest <laughs> Jessica Hepley's leading ladies is going so well so if you ever see her offering like a workshop for everybody hop on now she is one of my sponsors actually um so like Joanna said I joined in 2015 and prior to that my husband and I lived in Zambia Africa for two and a half years um, and that is where I met my sponsor who you may know, Abby Kappa. Um, you might have listened to her podcast at some point or something, but she was like 19 years old, um, and just on a short term trip. And we just connected within the 24 hours that she was there. Cause she was wanting to come full time at that time into ministry with us in Africa. Um, and Turns out when she got back to the States, she was pregnant. I was pregnant at the same time. So I connected with her like, look, you can do life on the mission field, pregnant and with babies. It's fine, you know? And so the Lord used this connection. So that is one thing that I would love for you to just like remember and get out of that is he is weaving a tapestry in your life and you really never know who or what will be pulled from the past or who you will meet that this is specifically for, because Abby and I were not friends. We did not really connect on a personal level. Um, we still never did. And that's okay. The Lord used her to bring this opportunity into my life. And it has changed everything for our family. And for such a time that he had planned for us to be in this season of provision and in this season of ministry with Plexus. So, um, when I got back to the States, um, obviously she wasn't quite in Plexus yet. Um, and she never came over full time based on what she had going on with her life at the time. And so we were just Facebook friends, right? And I got back to the States. We entered back in 2015 in August um, and or in July and came back for worship ministry. My husband and I met when we were in fifth and sixth grade at music camp, <laughs> Georgia Baptist music camp. So we have been singing together and our families have been singing in church like all of our lives. And so um, I knew before he did that the Lord was going to use us in some form or fashion in worship ministry, because why else, you know, would he have brought us together with that kind of story and background? And, and so it's just been neat to see that come to fruition. And so we moved back to the States knowing that's what God had called us to no jobs lined up, no nothing. Um, and so I, speaking of jobs lined up, he is at work because the mission board has a thing at our church. Hold on, bud. I'll do prayers in just a minute. I'll do it in just a minute. Just go night night. Okay, love you. <laughs> Sorry, he forgot to do prayers. Sorry, we did high low buffalo and I forgot to do prayers. Um, but so we get back to the States and I'm just like, had Skylar was 15 months old and like at some point you just can't call up baby weight and like oh I just had a baby this is why I feel so terrible and you're just like all right what's happening <laughs> so um I was just exhausted honestly I, I started to like just get into the season of like, I know this is not who God created me to be. Like I've just been in a season of like super charismatic ministry overseas where like, I know who God created us to be. I know what his power looks like. I know what he is capable of in my life and elsewhere. What is happening? <laughs> you know, like what is going on? And so I just like, I was just tired and 
bloated and all of the things. And I had dealt with IBS and random stuff like that, like embarrassingly since high school, I will save all of the gory details, but that was just something again, like I thought that I would live with that forever. And then things were just exacerbated after I had that baby for a long time afterward. And so I told my husband, like, I just kept seeing her post things. And I actually saw another friend posting it works at the time. That was like a big deal, you know, back in the day. And I was just watching them both posting. And I'm like, I just got off the mission field. Like how in the world could I align myself with anything like this? Right? Like those of you who are in the church world, not like we have hierarchy or like pedestals, but like if someone's going to put you on a pedestal, like, oh, you were a missionary. Now you sell stuff on Facebook. That's weird. <laughs> you know? So I was like, I can't do that, but I needed something. I needed a change. I wasn't going to wake up and go to the gym. I could barely roll out of bed and like not want to go straight to the couch and watch my kid play on the floor with my like 60 year old, seven year old mom instead of me. I'm not going to the gym, right? So I'm not going to waste the money we don't have on a membership because we still didn't have jobs at this point. We were living with my parents um, when we got back from the mission field. But I just kept seeing Abby's posts. And what were what was different about watching her post was seeing how Plexus was not just about weight loss. The other company that I was watching and some other people that were even with different stuff, it was all about like getting back into a bikini or like all of this stuff. And I'm like, I just want to get off the couch, right? Like, I just want to feel like I can do something and feel productive in my day. Like, I don't care if I ever look good in a bikini again. I just don't want to feel like this anymore. And so I just started to really like be drawn to what Abby was posting because it was, it was about overall wellness. It was about real healing. And I understood like the Lord created our bodies beautifully. Like they are a masterpiece of his creation. And like, I understand that we do a lot to our bodies that, you know, kind of wrecks that like not, yeah, the fall alone, but environment, diet, all of these things that I know I had not taken care of myself well my entire life. And so um, I told my husband and I was like, I really, I really think that I want to do these products that she keeps posting about. Like, I just need something. And, you know, he, he has been an advocate for me to be like, well, obviously what husband doesn't want you to have more energy and like be happier. <laughs> right. Um, but um, even when like, he was the first person, like when we got married, he was like, get off birth control. Like you are a lunatic <laughs> You're on that stuff and praise God, because it's terrible for you. Um, but he was like, Sal, I don't think that that is legit. Like, I think it's just going to be, you know, a waste, but it's a 60 day money by guarantee. Like, if you feel like you need to do that, that's fine. And so I was, you know, kind of just trying to do my research and all that. And I knew with that 60 day money back guarantee, it would be like, at least okay, that I wasn't wasting what little savings we had less. He, he literally was about to start working part-time at Chick-fil-A while we were like interim worship leading at a church. Cause we just still had no idea what God had in store for us. And within like a week, y'all, I started sleeping better and was waking up like once, like, oh, and I was still nursing through the night. Um, and I, f I woke up rested. Like I wasn't just slapping the phone 18 times and like dragging myself out of bed. I just remember like dreaming again. And so I knew that my sleep quality, even if quantity wasn't there, like the quality was much better and y'all sleep changes a lot, <laughs> you know, like, even if that was the only thing it helped with the, the ripple effect of good sleep for your body is huge. Um, but obviously that wasn't the only thing it helped with my stomach issues started to clear up my weekly tension headache started to clear up. And I was just like, I think this stuff is legit. And of course the way I am, um, as you said, I'm kind of like a red green personality. I get a little bit dog with a bone when it's things I'm interested or curious about. And so I just kind of dove into the YouTube universe of Plexus videos. And I just dove into all the testimonies and I was like, this is insane to me that all of these people are seeing this whole gamut of stuff like happening in their bodies. And they're taking the exact same thing that I started taking for like baby weight and fatigue. Um, what is this? <laughs> like, how is this happening? How does this work? And why doesn't everyone know about it? Honestly, right? Because one of the biggest tools that I think the enemy uses in our lives to keep us unfruitful and unhappy and locked up in our own selfish little worlds of poor pitiful me 
is our physical and mental well-being. And to have these tools now at somehow randomly, not randomly, at my fingertips where I'm looking at people in my life where I'm saying, mm, my mother-in-law misses church at least two to three times a week because she has migraines and rheumatoid arthritis and can't move well or can't breathe from her asthma. Um, that's, that's for sure the enemy keeping a pastor's wife at home, not in her giftings, right? Um, I could think of five different friends when I saw a testimony about PCOS and infertility oh, and just thinking, how I she thought you were gonna oh, do we not know about this, right? Like, how did we not learn? And then I just started kind of like, forgive my French, get pissed off. Like, where has this knowledge been? Like, why didn't they teach us how our bodies work? Like, this is crazy, right? And so I just like, I prayed over it and Brandon was like, okay, I see that it's working for you, but does it work for other people? Right. He's like, I can get behind it. Cause I know it's working for you, but like these things only work when you share them, if they are also going to work for other people. So then his mom, like I shared, you know, me plus three style. I got his mom, um, a friend from our church, actually a friend from our church, my friend, Mary Catherine, um, was one of the first people I messaged the crap out of her. She will laugh with you to this day. Cause she's still a customer of mine. Um, all of <laughs> the messages that I would send like this long of messages because I knew what she was dealing with. And I was like, Oh my God, can you believe this? This is insane. You know? Um, and bless her heart. She just saw my passion was like, okay, Sally. Um, and then an old boss of mine that I knew struggled with weight. And then a friend of mine who I knew like struggled with going to the bathroom. And I was like four people in one month. So I went silver a month and a half after I joined. Um, and then started to see changes in these friends and these family members of mine. And so Brandon also, again, was like, okay, so I just saw that you made some money and now we know the products work for other people too, but like the business really only works. Like if other people can make money too, like, that's great. Like maybe you're just able to talk people into this, or you just have like a, a big enough platform or whatever. Um, but if other people can't make money, then it's not going to work. And then his mom went silver and then Mary Catherine went silver. <laughs> and then we got my other friend, Bethany silver. And by January I was gold. And he was like, okay, well now you can't stop doing this. Like whatever it is that is happening, you can't stop. Right. <laughs> and so, um, that is how my business started. Honestly, just being mad that the enemy holds us back and he keeps us from like, knowledge of how our bodies are created to work and good things and how much skepticism like skepticism y'all is not from the lord and we wear that like a badge of honor there's a difference between wisdom and skepticism and unfortunately so many of us are like i was skeptical too well i was too but honestly we're all just if we're honest scared of making a bad decision and looking stupid right that's really what that is like yes skepticism yes like oh i've seen other people not do this Ultimately, we just don't want to look dumb and like someone got pulled the wool over our eyes or got, you know, hosed us or whatever you want to call it, right? We fell for the snake oil. Um, but we know that that's not what that is now. Like you're at a place, whether you just have started your products or you've been sharing for a while, you've been on these products. I've been on these products now for seven plus years, y'all. I haven't done anything in my life for this long, except for being a mom. Like, and I don't have that choice. <laughs> I mean, um, I quit college. So did my husband. So I don't even have a degree. Um, we have moved like every two and a half years. We almost have been here for four years. It's the longest we've ever been in one place. So like I hadn't held a job longer. Like I'm still here because it still works. Okay. There's no like grass is greener. Next best thing. I'm not just doing this because it's making me money and the products are cute. This changed everything for me and my family. And I've watched it do the same thing for hundreds of people, no matter what thing it is filling in their life, whether it is just so that they can be present in what they're doing, or if God has more for them in this. So that is how I got started. I went Emerald in 18 months. And then y'all pride is something that the Lord will always break you of and he will humble you. Why? To build character in you. So if you are at a season where you are steady, not stuck, where you are steady in your business, 
you need to search inside. What is God teaching in this moment? Where do, what are you hesitating? What, what character traits is he trying to develop in you before you are moving forward, right? What are the little things we have to be faithful in right here and right now before he's going to give you that greater thing? Um, and so I sat at Emerald for three years and there was a lot that went on between me and my sponsor, y'all. People are people, but kingdom work is people, right? And so we have to work on ourselves and we have to love and have grace for other people and ultimately realize we get to be obedient, whether other people are following the same path or vision that you are or not. Um, and so over that three-year stretch, our team went from like really connected with my sponsor to like taking full ownership of my team and my growth with a different vision that fit who my team was, that fit um, we're kind of just like, obviously I'm in a robe right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we're not trying to put on airs and like be who we're not. Um, we got a lot of just real people on our team. And I love that. Like I'm a corny person. I grew up in the Baptist church. So I'm like, sometimes everything's going to start with a letter P and there might be five of them. And that's just how we're going to train, you know? <laughs> I like corny stuff sometimes. Like I love the culture of plexus. I love to be, you know, at the convention and, and really just buy into what our plexus culture is. I don't feel like I need to be cool or like create a, you know, something different from that. Like we just, we just are who we are and not that anyone else doing it differently is doing bad. They're just doing it their way. One thing I heard now triple diamond family, Brooke Hemingway say years ago when she was like skyrocketing to the top, um, was that you find something that works for you and makes sense to you, which is huge in my brain, find something that makes sense to you, a way of working that makes sense to you and go with it, run with that. If you're trying to fit yourself into things that make sense to other people and never fully take on what makes sense to you, you yourself are never going to fully take ownership and be able to just like run with it and enjoy your business and love what you do. Because it's someone like we have to have someone pouring vision into an over us in the beginning. We have to. But during this journey, you will discover and find your own because why? You are gifted and you are unique, blessed by the Lord and here for a specific purpose to reach specific people. And guess what? I let a long time people that God had given to me to steward and I passed them up and said, no, she's better at this. Like, just learn from her. Like, you'll be fine. And God said, I didn't give them to her. I gave them to you. And I was sitting out on leadership because I was scared and I didn't know how to work well with others, honestly. Okay. And so I had to work through a lot of that stuff and learn to be courageous and learn to step up leadership and learn to invest into other people and do things that were scary for me in order to steward the people that God had given me well. Well, fast forward it's what you do in the down times and in the steady times that allow you to be excited when growth and big things happen because 2020 came and we tripled our team in like four months. It was absolute insanity. And I know y'all were probably around for a lot of that because you felt some of that too. Um, it was crazy. We went from Emerald to reentry diamond literally within a four month span. And it was so fun. It was incredibly overwhelming also because I felt this at gold. I was like, oh my God, I have 20 people under me. Like, what am I supposed to do? I felt it at Ruby. Oh my God, there's a hundred people. Like, how do I help a hundred people? You know? Um, and then y'all, what do you do when there's 6,000 points underneath you? You know how that's, I don't even do math. So I didn't finish college. That's a lot of people. But guess what? He equips you and he will call you way before you ever feel like you are worthy of any of it because we are meant to rely on him and we're meant to dig in and we're meant to grow. Um, and so we have been diamond since 2020 and I'm so grateful for that. I've got five jewels underneath me now, um, three level one legs. So that's where those stars come from the new star diamond program. Um, and then a level two and a level three emerald as well. So, um, no, sorry, two sapphires of those are sapphires. And I just know that the Lord has so much more in store for those people. And I think that's what I'm most excited about now is like, 
I don't need, y'all, we lived in a tent for two and a half years. Like I love that we have been able to move and we have things and we have a, a nice ish house now. Um, but truthfully, there are days where I'm just like, I would move straight back into a tent and get rid of everything. Like it's not about collecting wealth. It's not about, um, you know, storing up our treasures on earth or building our own kingdoms or any of that. But even today on Jessica's call, we were on and it's, it's like, what is God going to do through you? Like not only through the abundance that he's going to offer you, because if you are living in a place of lack where you don't have and, and whatever your thought process around money is or abundance is, we are called to love on others and to give and to give cheerfully and, you know, have things with open hands. And if we don't have enough to pay the bills that keeps us stuck in a very selfish place in a very settling place. Um, that's one of the things that, I, you know, you had asked me what are ways that this business has blessed you and it's allowed us to not settle. Because there are a lot of ministry families that are still in a church where they don't feel called to be or serving in a place or maybe in a job when they feel called to ministry. Why? Because they have to pay the bills and they're stuck paycheck to paycheck. And what this business has done for our family is we get to say, Lord, where are we going? You know, what are we doing? My, my husband does not have to be worried about losing his position at church. If he feels like there's something going on where he is no longer on board with something, guess what? He doesn't need his paycheck. What are they going to do? Fire him? Ooh, sorry. <laughs> you know, like we do not have to live according to the standards of this world because we have the freedom of this provision that comes anywhere and everywhere from our phone while we are doing a good work, y'all. This is good work. Whether or not you are just helping someone not have migraines anymore and be able to like get out of their closet, literally one of, um, Donna's on here. Her upline was one of my friends from high school. And it just used to break my heart because Adrian was just like, you just don't even know, like multiple times during the month, I would just be in my master closet because it was dark. And I didn't know what my kids were doing. I was just hoping they were okay. You know, I didn't know that about her life, but praise God, like she didn't have to struggle with that anymore. And now here's Don, you know, she's loving the products too. And she's here and sharing. And it's just this beautiful thing that we get to do. And we get to say, I'm going to offer it and the Lord is going to do and create this woven tapestry that he is going to do because why he's answering prayers and he's working even when we don't see it. There's a beautiful song called Waymaker. If you've never heard it, even when I don't see it, you're working, right? Even when I don't feel it and I feel like a failure and I feel like no one's liking or commenting on my post. Guess what? That might be the 10th time someone's seen something and God's going to move in their heart on number 13 because he has a prayer to answer in their life. Y'all, I have a stranger beautiful jewel on my team who was an absolute stranger praying for an answer for her acid reflux and her heartburn because she didn't want to go on medication. She lives in Pennsylvania. I live in Georgia and she found me on a, um, wellness mamas. I had just made a comment, you know, you know, all those comments we like sweat over and someone was talking about thyroid stuff or something. And I was like, well, a lot of my friends have um, seen really great benefits with some, you know, natural supplementation if you're interested <laughs> and trying to be like PC about it, but also like, ah, brave. Um, and she saw that done deal with thyroid issues, but she saw that comment reached out to me. And within a couple of weeks on triplex, guess what? She doesn't struggle with anymore. Heartburn and acid reflux. And guess who's a jewel on our team now and is like loving her life um, with her adopted daughter that they waited 17 years for, not having to stress out and be at work and all of that. Yeah, the Lord is working even when you don't see it. So we be faithful and we watch the fruit come because he is faithful. Um, let's see, I did write things down. I just word vomit. So there's all of that. Some of the other ways this has blessed us now um, going forward, we have been able to do things obviously with Plexus and experience things as a married couple that we never would have been able to do on a ministry salary for sure. If we had stayed like in missions in that way, um, we were living and fundraising off the support of others. And so quite literally, I have seen a complete 180 shift in what God has done in our lives where he humbled us and we had to ask for money, right? We fundraised completely $60,000 a year um, off of the donations and monthly gifts of individuals and churches um, for two and a half years to live on the mission field. And um, one of the things that someone said that was a part of that ministry was like, if you're not called to go, 
then you go home and you make as much money as you can so that you can send and be a part of the mission of God so that you can help those who are, you know, called to be out there sharing the, the gospel. So we watched that happen over the course of years. And now four or five of our really good friends, plus indigenous pastors that Brandon helped raise up while we were there, we get to support them like a lot. And I remember what it felt like, you know what? We appreciated $5 donations a month. We appreciated the $20 donations a month. But when you had someone that said, I'm willing to give $250 a month or $300 a month, like the weight that that removed, knowing like that's potentially 10 to 15 meetings I don't have to go have and people that I don't have to find. Like that's what that meant to us. And to be able to do that for multiple of our friends who are still there, um, as well as allowing these pastors to go and and be out in the bush, like where no one else is going because they can't get there. Um, the Lord uses that. I don't feel any shame or guilt that I left the mission field to come and be a plexus diamond. That was a hundred percent God. <laughs> Like I didn't choose or am not special and like educated to have done any of that, right? Like that was his plan for our life and for everyone else who this has touched through me. Um, and it's just been really cool to see on the flip side of that, of like being able to receive and we have to learn to receive. Jessica was talking about that today. Like if you can humble yourself enough to receive well, then God gives well so that you can give well. Um, Christian education for our kids. I have always felt called to homeschooling because I was a public school kid and I hated school, honestly. So did my husband, which is why we didn't finish college. Like we just did not love our education experience and did not feel like it developed us to become um, real world people and strong foundationally Christian, you know, living people. And so we had this heart to um, homeschool. And it was awesome when I went enrolled solely to get Brandon home. <laughs> it was like my main mission. I was pregnant. We, I was literally, it was when the watermelon slim came out, the new slim microbiome came out in May of 2017. And I'm literally on my labor and delivery bed, like throwing out messages, like who is going to be ordering? And people are like, just have your baby, like get off your phone. And I was like, um, excuse you. I'm getting on my phone because me going Emerald this month means my husband gets to come home <laughs> and help me take care of these babies. That's what I want. Um, and so that was my goal. And we were able to do that. Um, and so when we moved here, he was able to, we were able to move churches and he took a part-time worship position as like, he's like, as long as I can, you know, fulfill my calling, I don't, I don't need a job, you know? Um, and so he was homeschooling for kindergarten and then 2020 hit and our worship ministry just like was kind of invaluable when everything went online and they asked him to come full time and then homeschooling fell on to me i'm gonna tell y'all i am not a gifted teacher okay i am not a patient person and it was not fun <laughs> for me because I want to do it so well. And it's just not my gifting. And, and especially while running a business, like I'm not a good multitasker and it was just real, real, not cute. So we went on this, um, marriage retreat, Cedar Rock Ministries. I share about that a lot in my stories, if you watch that and it was amazing experience. They're out of Arkansas. Um, they actually were missionaries for 10 years in Uganda. If you ever, Jessica talks about them a lot too, if you ever see that or follow them, um, amazing, amazing program. Um, but she said something to me that was so profound. Cause I just went and I was just kind of crying. I was just like, I'm just so overwhelmed. Like you're telling me I should only have three priorities a day, but I can't take any of these off my plate. Like I either, you know, can't run my business, can't educate my kid, can't take care of my, like, what am I going to not do, you know? And I was black and white thinking, and there's always other options. Like when we ask for help and stop this like crazy cycle of like, I think I thought I just knew it was either homeschooling or public school. And so here opens this beautiful world. And she's like, you know what? If your kids at this age don't know that you enjoy them and love them, then you need to make a change, <laughs> you know? Um, that was important. Someone else might be able to do those things and still their kids feel enjoyed and loved. It was not happening in our house. And so we found this beautiful Christian school that is a classical model school and university model. And it just was like the most beautiful, perfect fit for us. 
we never would have even considered an option like that. Why? Because public school and homeschooling is pretty much free, right? And then I'd be locked into that. And then my kids would probably hate me because they think that I didn't love and enjoy them. And here we are. Now we have options. We have choices. And my children are getting Christian education, which is so important to me um, because I don't want them to grow up confused like I did and have all of these ideas in their head too soon. That is very, that is a, a huge thing that I'm excited about. Like I want them to be in the world one day, but I need them to know who they are and who Christ is now um, so that they can handle what life throws at them. Um, and then we have been able to multiply our talents as we learn to invest and steward money well. Um, that is something that you can learn whether you're living paycheck to paycheck or not. But I'm very thankful that the Lord um, has been gracious to give us opportunities to learn the hard way and it be okay, even in some instances, um, because of the abundance that he's given us. Um, we were able to purchase the house we're living in now on a 15 year mortgage instead of a 30, we we're able to keep the house that we moved from and we're renting that out. And hopefully we'll have that paid off. And then we have land across the street. Like we never would have been able to do any of that before. Um, that would have been very difficult to say because we were not super disciplined before. Um, but this has provided freedom for our family um, experiences for Brandon and I to be able to get away. It's, I mean, this, would, this last year was our sixth luxury vacation to Hawaii and Mexico and all of these places like that time of rest and reconnection with a spouse is invaluable and yes like it's a swanky fun thing but like that's a big deal a lot of us don't get that prior to especially when it comes to ministry families like you just don't get a break and you're spending all of your time giving 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 to others and you don't ever feel poured into or reconnected um, so that's all about me. That is a lot of my story. And I do, if Joanna, I don't know if y'all usually are done at 830 and we need to hop off, but I did have some tips that I wrote down that are helpful, hopefully for you. Um, is it okay to, to just go forward with those? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so just some tips from me again, I'm an introverted person. I just discovered that I'm a nine wing eight on the Enneagram. I mistyped as a five wing four for a really long time, but I think it was just in a strange season of my life where I was extra introverted. And so I was like, maybe I am a five. Um, I'm a nine wing eight, pretty hardcore. So that is, if you identify with Enneagram at all, that's who I am. And anybody can do this. It doesn't matter what your personality type is. It doesn't matter what you look like. Joanna is like the most beautiful Pocahontas woman ever in the whole world. You don't have to look beautiful Pocahontas like Joanna. Y'all, anyone can do this. Why? Because this is a people relationship business and everybody has people. There are people around you 24 seven that need what you have. It's all about courage and finding the strengths, gifts and talents within you to connect to others that God has for you to meet. So you also need to know your own version of what success looks like. Because for you right now, it may not motivate you to think about being a diamond and going to Hawaii. Maybe that's not what motivates you because that's really not what success feels like to you. Maybe success to you is getting out of debt. Maybe success to you means I don't have to struggle month end and like, chase down all of these bills and feel like I can't buy that extra thing at the grocery store. Maybe to you, success looks like being able to pay off your house or being able to move or switch jobs or let your husband, you know, switch a job. Y'all, you're not going to work hard and grow personally for someone else's version of success. Why? Because you don't connect to it. You don't really care about that. Okay. I don't really care to have zebras and all the stuff that Celeste Gwynn has. Okay. She's amazing. And the most stars of anyone on this entire, like in this company, but I don't see myself in that. I don't see myself as this awesome, fun, loving person who has 8 million friends and like all this crazy stuff, right? Like that doesn't motivate me to work for that. But what motivated me was to have my husband home. Why? Because he was my safe space and I needed help and I wanted him, you know, that was my version of success was give me these things, you know, so I can be in my house and you can all be here with me. Um, my version of success looked different than the version of success and vision of success of people on my team. And so I have to remind them too, like, 
you'd probably don't want what I want, but guess what? You do want options to be able to want what you want and what makes sense for your family, which comes next. Um, Don't compare. So know your own version of success and don't compare with others. If you know where you're going, then you can be proud of what you're doing or not doing. And you can have that as a litmus to like, if my version of success is this, am I doing enough to get there? Am I doing what I want to do so that I reach where I want to go versus, well, I'm not as good as so-and-so. Well, her vision of success may be to be speaking on the convention stage by next year. I remember when Emily Gibson and Brett Hemingway said that they're like, I saw them talking and I was like, I'm going to be up there next year. And they did it, you know? And I'm like, that would have been cool, but that wasn't my vision of success. Now, I definitely fought through some comparison of like, well, I saw them last year and I kind of thought like that would be cool to be up there but that wasn't my vision, right? And I can't compare my success to someone else's if it's apples to oranges. Um, So comparison, you got to throw that out the window and go after your vision. Um, And then shareholder meetings. When you know what's important to you and your family and your version of success, your husband may not buy into the whole plexus thing. He may not understand what it means to be a diamond or an emerald, or he may never really think y'all are going to go to Hawaii. Maybe that's something that would be important to you. So I'm not saying that's dumb. It was important to us. Um, But he might like a couple extra nights a week to be able to go to some soccer games. Yeah. He might like to have a few hours less. Um a month to be able to go hunting, like shareholder, that stuff, (laughs) like your family has goals. Like your husband has things that he desires and that he wants. My husband has a closet full of Nike shoes. He is a sneakerhead, and he is thankful for this business for a lot of things. But the fact that he can go have fun on that sneakers app and get the latest drops of Jordans, whichever it is, and however crazy they look, is the funnest thing in the world for him. And we have the extra to do it and it's okay, you know? And he just looks hilarious and crazy up there and people call him sneakers. Like, it's fine. He loves it, okay? Like that is a gift that he is just like getting to be like a kid in a candy shop these days with sneakers. Um, Whatever it is for your family, maybe it's a family trip to Disney World. Maybe it is that you don't ever get to go visit your daughter or your grandchildren because you're having to be stuck at work. Like, What is it that motivates you and your family? Get together because there will be sacrifice. There will be nights like tonight where you could be doing something else or there will be afternoons or evenings where, I mean, I remember going Emerald. We didn't watch TV at night anymore. My husband and I used to watch a movie every night and we do a lot more of that now, but I was on calls. I was training. I was working my business and doing my IPA very often. And that time was set aside for that. And he was okay with that. Why? Because he was bought into the vision that we had for the vision of success that meant what our family wanted and needed. Not that I was going to turn into some like blonde haired plexus diamond. I did. I did do that. Like I'm way more blonde now. And I do have extensions that I put in sometimes. I just, I just loved y'all and I didn't dress up for you. Um, But that wasn't the vision that I had back then, you know? This is just me getting to be me now. Anyway, shareholder meeting. And then you've got to take ownership of your business. You have strength in you. You have beauty in you and life-changing information and stories to tell. It is no one else's job to get you where you want to be than yours and the Lord's. We can sit under someone who is awesome and amazing in all of the different ways than we are, but until you sprinkle in that little extra bit of your juju magic that is like making you you, we're missing pieces of the pie. The recipe is not coming together. I love when Genevieve talks about that. Um, You are the missing link between the people that you have and what you're plugging them into. Because Joanna can run all of the amazing things in the world, but if you're not involved in it, your people don't care. And I will just tell you that because I sat on the sidelines for those couple of years where I was just like, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I'm not really a leader. And my team kind of fell apart. I had some senior golds and rubies that just like bless their hearts because I wasn't showing up, you know, and they didn't give a hoot about what Abby was doing because I was their sponsor. 
But had I been there to be that bridge and to be that connector and have a little bit more buy-in and take ownership little by little in those times, they could still be here working. But God's, you know, there's, there's no regret there. I grew as a person, our team is fine and they are in seasons where they're at and that's fine. And they may come back, they may not. You don't regret those times, but you have to show up because you are the connector. If you disappear, your people will disappear because they care because they joined you. So whether or not you're leading all the things, that's not what I'm saying. You don't have to do everything and be in charge of everything, but you have to take ownership to show up and be their bridge. Whether that's a a team chat that you're creating or texting your couple of people that are going to show up on the call with you, making sure that you're touching base with your customers to plug them into something and you're doing it with them, you're the bridge. Retention, it's about you showing up and being the bridge with them. Um, so you're very much more important than you think, no matter what the amazing jewels and people and your leaders are doing without you, your people are not going to connect to any of that. So those are the things that I would say will just help you develop into the type of person who can handle what is going to be thrown at you and handle the type of systems and things that you're going to want to have underneath you and the ability to show up in order to have a team that will grow to the jewel level. Okay. Wow. Sally, that was so, so good. So many like goosebump moments and like, yes, I love all of that. Your story is just so beautiful. And thank you so much for taking the time to share it with us. I know your tips and just, just hearing all of that in your journey, especially with, for the, even people like our team in ministry, I know so relatable. Um, do you have a few minutes just for quick Q and a, if anyone has, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think my kids fell asleep. So I'll just go pray over them. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, okay. Does anyone have any questions for her? Anything that stuck out? Or you're like, okay, like maybe expound a little bit more on this. Anything like that? Now's your chance to ask. Unmute yourself and ask if you have a question for her. <clears throat> so when you did step into your own leadership role and then start to lead your team, how did you, how did you hand that emotionally? Like when, cause people's feelings get in there. Right. And do you know what I'm trying to ask? Yes. Well, okay. I would say it definitely depends on your current relationships. Um, where I was at, it was not really healthy. And so it, it was, it was hurtful on both sides and it was messy but the Lord worked all things out fine. And so I would say if you've got good, healthy relationships, it's probably good to have a nice conversation about it because ultimately as leaders, and I have always felt strongly about this, which is why it was like crushing me to be in the situation that I was in, but I'm like, I don't want a bunch of followers and employees, right? Like I want leaders underneath me. And what I felt like wasn't happening was like, I'm like, if I am your employee and doing what you're telling me to do, like, how am I ever going to give space for anyone to grow into their own leadership? Because we were sharing that with multiple other jewels, like together, and only had like one page at the time, just this was our story. We were one of the first people that I think like went to like a shared page and it worked for a little while. And I was like, but what's what's the end goal here? Like I'm a questions person. I'm like, I need to know, I need to know what's that way. (laughs) So I know how to behave now. And what was worrying to me was like, I know that I need ownership in order to step into leadership. I knew that it was important for me to have a team chat. It was important for me to learn how to do live videos and to do trainings. And if there was never a space for anyone underneath me to grow into that, it just worried me because I'm like, I don't want to do this forever. Like I need them to know what they're doing so that they don't need me one day. (laughs) Like I would like to work myself out of a job. Thank you. Um, And so that was where it came from for me was saying like, if this is your vision for how you want this to go and you always want people to just be here and relying on what you're doing, I don't want to do that for the rest of my thing. And I had to get in in real with the Lord, because it's not just about opinion and about wants and about me or you and how you're doing it versus it's not a competition in that way. It was like, my team is not being fed in a way where they are growing 
it was a kind of toxicish environment that I was not helping with. I had pulled back from leadership a lot. And so I had to ask myself some hard questions about what I was willing to do. And if I was just appeasing and like not really stepping up because I was afraid of conflict or scared to do things on my own and honestly scared because I was not connected to any of my uplines above my sponsor at all. They all lived states away and I was a new Emerald and Jessica Hefley has like a bunch of jewels on her team. So like nobody really cared about me <laughs> when I was first there. And I was like, but if I separate from myself, like no one's ever going to talk to me. <laughs> like they're going to be like, why did you leave that amazing team? Like Abby is the youngest diamond. Like she was like all it back in the day, you know? And it, it, she was great. She had so many amazing qualities, but she was 10 years younger than me and like 25 years younger than a lot of people on my team. And it just wasn't working for us. And so I had to learn to do hard things in that I had to do what I knew I was supposed to have been doing for a long time that I had been avoiding. So if you have things in your business where you're like, I know that I'm supposed to have been leading team Zooms, but these team Zooms are great. And so I'm just going to do that because we can plug into that. Are you doing that out of fear? Or are you doing that because that's what's best for you and your leadership and for your team? The answer might be both. If you've got a great relationship with your uplines, like praise God, you know, like maybe it's both, or maybe it's just that conversation of like, I'm really trying to step into leadership. Do you have some ideas for me? Here are some of the ways that I feel like I'm supposed to have been doing some things. How could this all work together? So like now for me, I've had this like immense fear of doing this to my jewels, right? Because they were in a season all the way till probably senior gold or gold, some of them where they never had any buy-in or leadership of their own. And so now we're all separate and now they're relying on me like I didn't want them to have to do, right? And so it kind of created this ripple effect of like dependency, which breeds kind of like, you want people to have some sense of safe independence as they grow in their business and as they grow in capacity and training and buy-in, right? And so I have just tried to make sure they know like, Anything that you feel like you're supposed to do that is taking ownership and taking care of your people and is better for your team. Like if I start acting weird, call me out on it. But like, I want you to do that. Even if it means no one shows up on my Zooms anymore. I've gone through a season now as a diamond where my jewel legs, they're all leading Zooms on Monday nights. And I was like, can we just have like one a month where everyone comes? Cause I was like, sad, like nobody comes to anything that I do, but then like, kind of, that's what I've been working for, for the last seven years, <laughs> you know, it was like, people like me when they need me, but like, they don't need me all the time. And so I think it's just this balance of know where you're at, appreciate the people that are around you, um, out of respect, but ultimately we all need to release control when it comes to having someone on your team, whether that's yourself, your upline, your downline, who is doing something great and just realizing that it's okay if you are doing things differently or need to do something different. We don't have to be jerks about it for sure. Um, maybe that was a long explanation. I don't know if it was very helpful, but it's a dance. And it's okay that dancing feels awkward at first. Ultimately, everybody wins at the end of the dance and we all have fun. Yeah, you said a lot of exactly what I needed to hear. So I'm so thankful this is recorded so I can go back and take notes. <laughs> so thank you. You're so welcome. Any other questions before we let her hop off? I do, if I can. Um, now, I'm from a ministry home as well. My family traveled and sang. Uh, and we still do. We recorded a CD this summer. It's so fun. I love it. That's amazing. And my husband's assistant pastor. So can you talk to me a little bit about your juggle with that ethically as well as relationships? For sure. Um, do you follow Randa Jordan? She's a Sapphire. Her family is in like a, a worship band and they sing and they um, they also travel. She's real fun. She's from Georgia, but um, not on my team. I wish she was. She's beautiful. But I think this is something where we have to let go of our fear of man and understand what is in your heart. Um, because here's the thing. 
there are going to be people that misunderstand you. I literally was bawling on a call Monday, Joanna, were you on there when I was like sucking wind? Because fear of being misjudged is terrifying to me. Like, I feel like I want to over explain myself to everyone just so that you don't think I'm a jerk or you don't think I'm mean, or you don't think I'm stupid or like whatever it is in the situation. And Jessica just kind of hit me, slapped me in the face. She's just like, why are you so scared of that? Like, why are you scared that someone's going to misjudge you? Like the truth comes out in the end. Like if you have a wrong heart about why you're sharing Flexus and you're treating people like they're a number, whatever, like then that's going to come out. If that's not who you are, then you don't need to be worried about it. And I have a lot of ministry families on my team. And I, we talk about this often because it can feel that way, whether it's a neighbor who misunderstands you, or if it's someone at church who like started the product and then got off of them. And then like says like a snide comment or like any of that stuff can completely derail you because it's the last thing that you want, right? Like this is a beautiful ministry in and of itself. It is a partnership to whatever God is doing in your life. And I can say that kind of with full confidence because I know our company, I know our products and it's not a fight for what God is already doing for people like this is. So, um, actually I just talked to someone about this at the momentum meetup. Cause she was a pastor's wife and she said the same thing. She's like, I just feel like, I feel like I can't share so openly because of, you know, how people will perceive that at the position that we're in. And I'm just like. Here's the thing. The gospel changes everything. And so sharing the gospel, this is not like I'm going to share plexus and never live out my life so that people know that I'm a Christian, right? Like it's not a one or the other in our lives. Are you going to see more plexus posts probably than me like typing out the gospel in my stories? Yeah. Why? Because I don't social market Jesus. Like I walk the walk in my life and I live that in my family and how I serve people face to face. I'm not trying to network market my Christian life. Um, this is a business God has called me to. And Paul was a tent maker, right? He made tents. He didn't feel like that was in the way of like, he had a trade and God used that to provide for his family. The other side of things is when we lived in Africa, people came um, on short-term trips and we would always say like, we come with the gospel first. So we had a well drilling division. We had um, kids ministry things. We had, I mean, all of these other philanthropic things that our organization did out in the bush to help people tangibly, we came with the gospel first. And so that would be that would be the balance of life where I would say to you, like, are your thoughts is your main objective in life always only plexus, then you need some balance and you need some spiritual, you know, boundaries in your life to make sure that your heart and your mind is in the right place so that you're who you are and who God's asking you to be for your family and for where you are and where you're serving at the same time, people need what we have. When I lived in Africa, people needed clean water. Like for us to just go be like, Jesus loves you. Okay. See you later. They're drinking out of dirty mosquito infested poop infested water because their well has been broken for 50 years. So we come with Jesus and then we fix the damn well, <laughs> right? Like give them water, let them live. Bring the spirit of the Lord in with your presence and with who you are and how you love people, but then give them what they need so that they can be set free. And for a lot of people, it's these products. And for the people God's bringing to you, that's exactly what it is. And so the question isn't, you know, is this a competing thing or is it okay ethically? It's why is it okay to let people suffer because I'm scared of what they're going to think. Jesus didn't do that. You know, he walked past people and he healed on the Sabbath and he spit on their face, you know, but he was the son of God and he gave them what they needed. And he never let that detract from who he was in his mission to save the world, but he still met people tangibly. So that was so good. <laughs> So, so good. I, and I think our church, um, I think of our church, what our church does with the, these mission trips, they go on where it's like medical missions 
And <clears throat> that's like their sole purpose is to help them medically with like vision and with all kinds of different things. And they have like people lining up the night before and sleeping there so they can be first in line to be seen for like their health issues. And they always have so many people come to the Lord who would get saved because they share the gospel with every single person um, after they help them with their, with their health issue. And so it's just so cool that we get to do similar things with what we do. So, all right, Sally, um, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you. It was just so beautiful. I know everyone was so encouraged to hear from you. So we so appreciate you and I hope you have an awesome night. So thanks for hopping on. Um, Y'all, we're having book study right after this, just for a few minutes. So if you're on the book study, feel free to stay on this link. Um, and thank you for hopping on. We'll see you next Monday night, same time. We'll have another guest speaker. Um, and this was recorded so you can share with anyone that you're thinking of on your team so you know could be blessed by this. I know it was a really huge encouragement for me. Um, all right, have a great night, y'all.